Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. And what do we got here? Some 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball Dual Case Break, 24 boxes total. All card ship, a lot of fun stuff here. It's a long break, so settle in. And let's get this show on the road. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Got Lorenzo with Last Bot Mojo with my Dodgers, and there's everybody else. Thanks everyone for getting in. We'll do an autograph recap at the end of the break. And good luck. There's my knife. And with the uh, with the length of this break, this will actually take me right right to my break time as well. Maybe a little bit afterwards, but I'll probably grab some food after this. And by then, we should probably have some other breaks to line up on the schedule as well. Maximize some real estate here. All right. One autograph a box. Uh, there's generally some stuff. Um, that's fall generally one per case with the ultraviolet short print, which it's either that or it's going to be a, uh, a relic card. So sometimes a relic card could be autographed. Sometimes the, those ultraviolet inserts can be autographed too. We saw one of those yesterday. Let's see if I can. We have a jumbo case available. Uh, we'll also have another dual case available. We loaded up another one uh, just before we started this, this break. So if you want to join another dual case break, if you miss out on your team for the first time, don't miss out next time. But we do have a jumbo case that we can definitely do tonight. That's in single digits, I think, when we started this break. And with a little luck, we might be able to do another dual case tonight because it just it'll feel like a new release day. All this tops chrome. It looks like people are still into it. With the rate at which these are these pick your teams have been selling out rather quickly. So thanks everybody for uh, for making that happen. All right, so let's see what we got here. Good luck. And of course, all cards ship. And here's a nice gold wave auto to start things off. 25 out of 50. Oh, let me adjust my... I usually set a manual focus on this because these cameras are too shiny for the autofocus. Let's just switch that to manual focus. Let's slide that slider over there. So it might be a little blurry in the background, but it'll be the focus should be set right about there. You can still still see everything there. Pretty sharp, pretty nice. So that's Corey Lee, Gold Wave autograph, 25 out of 50. That's going to go to John Samuelson and the Astros. These guys. Mm. 
We got a Carlos Correa to 350. That's going to be for the Twins. That's going to be for Ed P. We've got uh, Rays at Yankees on in the background. And speaking of the Yankees, uh, Domingo Herman went on the restricted list in a treatment for alcohol abuse. I think he's out for he's out for the rest of the season. So hopefully, hopefully he gets himself right there. Had a perfect game not too long ago. And hopefully he figures that out. And we got a second auto in here. Bonus on, I guess they do say on average, one auto a box. Looks, looks like an above average box. It's 43 out of 499, John, uh, not John Lester, Josh Lester. I don't think any relation, but. So Josh Lester for the Tigers. That's gonna be for Michael P. And a Robbie Ray for the Mariners, 250. Purple Chrome for Seattle, that'll be for Zach. Nice start. Second box. What else is going on in Major League Baseball here? White Sox is, uh, oh, that's rough. White Sox, Liam Hendricks is gonna it's gonna get Tommy John surgery. Hmm, that's rough. After making a comeback from non-Hodgkin lymphoma, um, as expected, Bo Bichette going on the IL. Rodriguez on the trade call. Eduardo Rodriguez saying nothing against the Dodgers. Yeah, I'm just getting to that. Cubs is Marcus Stroman. A little hip issue going on the IL, but likely only out one start. The Yankees is uh, Nestor Cortez to return from the IL after two months. And Seeger, Corey Seeger off the IL rejoins the uh, Rangers earlier than expected with their uh, with their new look pitching staff, which could be pretty impressive. Rex, what's going on? Happy Wednesday, hump day. We do have some games in progress. A number of finals as well. I guess a lot of Wednesday, maybe a lot of early games so people can get out of, teams can get out of town and land on Thursday and get ready for Friday games. You have to say something funny they were talking to Jason about. Uh, well, when it comes to Rex, I'm funny is in air quotes. Mariners beat the Red Sox six to three. Cal Raleigh has been having a nice little week. And then he homered to spark a Mariners comeback. Padres crushed the Rockies 11 to 1. Gary Sanchez apparently had a couple 440 foot bombs. Padres, I think, one of the best run differentials in the month of uh, July. So they're, they've been heating up. They added to the team. We'll go through some more scores in the next box. Oh, is that right? Marlins are selling $5 burgers after getting Jake Burger. He deserves that. I've been, I don't know how many years I've been talking about how Jake Burger deserves some sort of burger promo, either a signature burger or discounted burgers. There's JJ Bladé, 74 out of 299. That is A's edition. Nope, check that. That's Marlin's edition. 
is currently on the A's. Dano with the fish. There's Marcus Simeon to 350. Rangers, that's going to be for Adam Kupperman. So Jaspies buys a case, uh, could we pay tax on it, then we sell it, there's tax on the sale. And then we now pay tax and we buy them Fanatics. Right. It's a lot more taxes for everybody. But I don't know if you've noticed, if you do a lot of online shopping, more and more retailers, that's something that's going to happen everywhere, Rex. I, pay, I, I bought some stuff on Amazon last night. I had to pay tax for it. You know, that's, that's just going to be a thing that we're just going to have to get used to. There's Green Wave to 99, Joe Musgrove. I mean, eventually we would have, I mean, eventually we'll probably have to pay charge taxes for everybody at some point. We'll, Yeah, that's why, yeah, exactly, that's why Amazon <clears throat> got a big tax break to set up a facility in Jersey, then the state can collect tax on everything they sell, yeah. I don't know how funny that is, it's just, that's just the way of life. Everyone's doing it. I'm sure. I'm sure if Delaware doesn't, I'm sure they'll get roped in at some point too. A lot of things to pay for. Just the brightness here a little bit. Let's see if that if that works. How Texas does what? Ooh, nice Corbin Carroll. That's awesome. Radiating rookie card, Sean Maddock with the Diamondbacks. There you go. Hide that back here. Oh, um, they get you on a, a lot of a. Uh, Californians who moved out to Texas for the no state income tax, they get you on a, they get you elsewhere, property taxes usually, commercial taxes. Sometimes it offsets, a lot of times it doesn't, which will be a surprise for people who'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go get a house in Texas. And,
Ooh, there's a relic in there. Yeah, Jan, Jan's, Jan's right. The, the dude, they have a lot of business. They generate a lot of money. And so taxing, taxing the, the big GDP of Texas kind of offsets some taxes to citizens as well. Well, the healthcare doesn't have anything to do with their gas prices. I see what you're trying to say. Though. They're paying. They're paying more in taxes in Germany to offset the healthcare that they get, among other services. Gas is a completely different story. That's just it's Michael P. with the Tigers. That's just supply and demand. <laughs> There's J.P. Crawford, three out of 99. And there's Otani for the Angels. That's Stephen C. Topps is uh, bringing back their uh, bringing back their MVP program. And the Jermaine Palacios goes to Michael. Um, so Otani's the favorite to win the MVP. So. You can turn that in for a little break credit at your local car shop. And there's Jeff McNeil. Nice uh, authentic relic for the Metropolitan that's going to be for Howard. Also, I think Europeans rely less on motor vehicles than we do. So their public transportation infrastructure, especially in the big cities, are, uh, are quite good. So most people, even if they own a car, probably don't use it not, not nearly as much as we do. So they're probably not impacted by that gas, at least in urban areas, probably like Berlin, you're probably not impacted by the gas price as much. Uh, has Jaspi pulled a gold here, Judge? BB baseball from last year? I'm not sure I understand the question. I mean, yes, we did. And um, I think a lot of people did bring those cards in for uh, for store credit, I think, in participating locations, but I think it's store credit. Well, this is a long baseball break, Adam, so I welcome uh, other non-baseball talk as well. I forgot to go through some more scores, but I'll do the next break. Um, actually, Astros beat the Guardians 3-2, Chas McCormick two-run homer. Nationals beat the Brewers 3-2. They walked it off in an errant throw to home. Oh, I think I saw that tip earlier today. Tigers beat the Pirates 6-3. Riley Green with a home run. He's in this set. Braves uh, beat up on the Angels 12-5. Riley and Olsen going back-to-back -back in a six-run fourth inning. Yeah, the Germans do get some great vacation time. Jan, that's for sure. Oh, is that how we're, are people abbreviating buyback as BB? Is that what the cool kids are doing, Rex? It's the first time I've heard of that. Um, I guess, yeah, uh, but yeah, we did, we did it last year, we'll do it again this year. Orioles and Blue Jays are tied, Rays are up 2-0 on the Yankees, Phillies up 2-0 on the Marlins. All right.
All right. Well, Jan, you are wrong on that. We use the imperial system, and everyone else uses the metric system. Got to fact check Jan sometimes. Hayden Winsneski for the Cubs. Adam Kupperman with the Cubbies. That autograph. Got Andrew Benintendi, White Sox edition to 75. That'll be for Jeremy Olson. Wait, you're saying they inserted the Golden Biomax from last year in this year's Chrome? Oh, did they? Uh, I don't know if I've, I've noticed. Here's a Jordan Walker refractor. That's nice. Cardinals, that's going to be for Nicholas Lali. Uh, some games that are coming up that have not started yet. White Sox Rangers, Reds at Cubs, Mets at Royals, Diamondbacks at Giants, and the A's are here in Los Angeles. Wait. Oh, see, that's 2023 edition. They're on the checklist? I wonder if they're, they've got to be really short printed then. There's Jeremy Pena to uh, 350. Astros, that'll be for John Samuelson. Got a Cade Cavalli, rookie refractor. Ah, Jan saying, according to Jan, the autos of Goldie and Judge are numbered to 22. So they're, they're autos? Or there, are there non-autoed versions? Here's a Michael Harris refractor that's going to go to Jim from the Braves. There's both non auto and autos, but the autoed versions are to 22. That's kind of fun. I wonder if stuff like that will be inserted into other, <clears throat> excuse me, other sets as well. Oh, now, Adam was talking earlier, this is a baseball break, but we're kind of in the dog days of summer for baseball, August. Although Volpe just hit a two-run shot. Um, tied 2-2. Two -two. Sort of the dog days. We've got to see, see in August how the new trades, the new players on new teams, how they integrate themselves into the team, how that helps them teams. Let's see who creates any separation in the division and wild card races. Blah, 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 blah. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But what about some NFL talk? It's a long break. We're, we're only halfway through, not even halfway through this first case. <clears throat> Excuse me. NFL preseason pre just around the corner. Well, preseason games are just around the corner. The preseason has already started. A lot, of, a lot of teams are in their, what, fourth or fifth practice of the season, except for the teams playing the Hall of Fame, Fame games. Oh, I guess there's Jets Browns tomorrow. We're, are we watching a little NFL tomorrow together? It's going to be fun. Apparently, Saints is Alvin Kamara is going to meet up with Goodell in New York. He's going to tell him his side of the story. That is the Hall of Fame game. That's right. Falcons QB Desmond Ritter. Comforted by the owner's support, vocal support of him. Yeah, they, a lot of people speculated that the Falcons might get a quarterback in the draft this year. It didn't happen. So it looks like they're riding with Ritter. Cooper Cup, hamstring issue, may miss a few weeks. Um, what else is going on here? It's just Hackett and Peyton, Sean Peyton arguing with each other. Bengals is running back Williams carted off with an ankle injury. 
Ronald Jones suspension due to heart. <clears throat> Well, um, let me know. Tell me who your team is, who your favorite NFL team is, and give me some updates from training camp. We can whip around the league, depending on how many different fans of different teams we have in the chat. I'm a Raiders fan, obviously. Have been for many moons now. And obviously, they got a new quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. Everyone's saying the right things. You know, chemistry is building is being built. He's, you know, he's a dog. He's a fighter. He's a leader. All the all the right things are being being said. But hope always springs eternal during training camp. Steve Locke with the Orioles gets the Adley Rushman Prism. And we got a Gunnar Henderson, Aqua Wave autograph, 142 out of 199. That's for Steve Locke and the Orioles. Nice. Nice call with the O's, Steve. All right, next little stack right here. And there's Riley Green, who had a nice game today. 68 out of 75. That's gonna go to the Tigers, that'll be for Michael P. Ooh, watch out, camera, where are you going here? Sorry about that. Don't worry, Steve, says Adam Cochran, if that gets shipped to me. We'll make sure you get it back, just like just like that Cam Atkinson card or whoever that was. Another Riley Green, another big prospects out there. Got a James Outman. There he is again right there. Photo negative. He managed to go 0 for last night, but still get two RBIs. He was hit by a pitch with bases loaded and drew a walk with bases loaded. But he's starting to get on base a little bit more, starting to heat up a little bit. If the power bat starts to come around, I'd love to see that leading into, into the playoffs. Let's see, according to ESPN, the best of Wednesday. Yeah, Vegas Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo eased into training camp after some foot surgery in March. He was, he was on a pitch count. He left practice a little bit early. And uh, rookie Aiden O'Connell getting some first team reps and had a nice connection with Devontae Adams. Adam was saying earlier, you saw Dalvin Cook at the at Jets practice on Sunday. Is he gonna is he gonna sign with the Jets? I gotta start thinking about fantasy football. Seems like he's between the Jets and Miami. Interesting.
All right, let's have a little fun here. <clears throat> Um, I've got, uh, from according to NFLShop.com, I've got the top selling jerseys of June 2023. I've got the top 10 here. Christian McCaffrey, number 10. Bryce Young, number 9. Tom Brady, 8. Justin Fields at seven, Joe Burrow at six. Can you guess the top five? Guess the top five. Aaron Rodgers, not number one. Patrick Mahomes, not even in, uh, Patrick Mahomes, number four, actually. Not number one. It's according to NFL, don't, don't look it up. It's according to NFLshop.com, June 2023 sales. So we got one, um, Rodgers is two, Mahomes is four. Who's one, three, and five? Top selling jerseys according to NFLShop.com in June of 2023. And we got a Yelich jersey. Nice, two of them in this, in this case. Authentic memorabilia, you can look up that code on MLB.com slash authentication, 40 out of 50. Sauce Gardner not on the list. I already mentioned that Bryce Young, Jan, you got to pay attention if you're going to play. Bryce Young is at nine. So six through ten is Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Tom Brady, Bryce Young, and Christian McCaffrey. Who's the top five? We got Mahomes at four. We got Rodgers at two. Those are good guesses. Who's one, three, and five? There's uh, Bryce Turing for the Brew Crew to 350. So that Yelich and the Turing going to go to Spencer and the Brewers. No, CJ Stroud not not even on the list. Not in not in the top 10 for June of 2023. I wonder if that's year to date or if it's just for June. I'm just reading what it says on the website. And we got a Matt Walner autograph, 272 out of 499 for the Twins, Ed P and the Twins. Now everyone gives up. There you go. Oh, and that's a homer for, is that Giancarlo Stanton on my fantasy team? Three run shot? Nice. That's what I need. No Hall of Famers on the list. Adam Kupperman, Jalen Hurts is number one. Jalen Hurts, according to NFLshop.com, top selling jersey of June 2023, followed by Aaron Rodgers at number two. We still need number three. Number four is Mahomes and number five. We still need number five. We need three and five. It was Carlos Perez, 78 out of 99, White Sox. It's a for Jeremy Olsen. Yeah, it's a little like Family Feud. I guess the fans are expecting the birds go to the Super Bowl again, yeah. Well, I mean, they had a pretty, pretty incredible year last year, so I'm sure they're they want to show their support during training camp, which I think they hold. They don't go too far. I think they hold at a college near Philadelphia, something like that. Um, no, not Desmond Ritter. Not even on the top ten. You're on the right track, Adam, but not Dak Prescott. 
You're on the right track, though. That's good logic. Using good logic. And that cowboy is in, is in position three. Yeah, speaking of the Cowboys, they come all the way out to California. Um, Oxnard, I think. A little bit north of them. Not C.D. Lamb. This Cowboy is in spot three. Not C.D. Lamb, not Dak Prescott, definitely not Ezekiel Elliott. And, and not using logic. Might have a lot of Cowboys fans trying to return. Ezekiel Elliott jerseys. Not Pollard. No, they got a, they got a, no, he's only there for a year, right? Yeah, I mean, you can if you want to, but that'll be on you. Yeah, you'll have to live with that. Yep, Adam's got it. Micah Parsons. I still got to use logic, though, Jan. Zeke Elliott not even on the team anymore. Didn't really perform too well with that big contract that they got, so I don't think Zeke will suddenly be in the top three of jersey sales on NFLShop.com in the month of June. Well, Micah Parsons is. We're still missing one more player, number five. Fifth best-selling jersey on NFLShop.com. Is that shop powered by Fanatics? Um, number fifth best-selling jersey, June 2023. There's Alexis Diaz, 64 out of 99. Nice Cardinals cards. Cardinals cards grabbing the cards. Hope we get a lot of cards cards in that jumbo break. Uh, Alexis Diaz for the Reds. That'll be for Kenny. We got a Gabriel Moreno autograph. I think that's a short print. Yeah, that's 173. The base or uh, the serial, serial numbers are 121. That's for Sean Maddock, Diamondbacks. Nice. Gonna go nicely with that radiating, radiating rookie, Corbin Carroll. So, best selling jerseys, month of June. Hertz is number one, then Rodgers, then Micah Parsons, three, Mahomes, four. We're looking for number five. Joe Burrow is six, Justin Fields is seven, Brady is eight, Bryce Young is nine, Christian McCaffrey, Niners jersey is 10. Who's number five? Fifth best selling jersey in that month. We got Hayden Wisniewski for the Cubs, Adam Kupperman with the Cubs. Fifth best selling NFL jersey. Yeah, you're starting your Hayden Wisniewski PC, whether you're intended to or not. There's Ryan McMahon to 150. I did not say Herbert, Johnny. And fifth best selling jersey. Not Justin Herbert. He's not in the top 10. Not too many Chargers fans in existence. You know, I thought I thought Pickett would be on the, on the list. He's not. He's not even. He's not number five. He's not in the top ten. Not Trevor Lawrence. I thought he'd be up there too. Nope. Not Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's not up there. I think they're buying. They're they're the ones buying those Christian McCaffrey jerseys. He's at number ten. Trevor Lawrence, I thought would certainly be up there. 
but maybe I don't know. But no, he's not not at least for the month of June. If I start giving clues, I think it'll get really easy. So we got a lot of boxes to go. I can stretch this game out if you want. Or until people cry uncle. We got everybody else except for the fifth best-selling jersey. Who could it be? Once you hear the name, you'll be like, oh, right, okay, that makes sense. Also, there are. Mm -hmm. No one's buying wide receiver jersey? Why? It's not a wide receiver. Not a running back. Not a defensive player, so that narrows it down, right? No, not Derek Carr Saints jersey. And we've got Bryce Harper. Yeah, Bryce Harper is a short print, another short print. Nice. That's going to be for Nick. Nick R. and the Fighting Phils. Nice. They've got code 173 at the end of that. And there's Spencer Steer. He's having a really nice season. There you go, Johnny's got it. Josh Allen for the Buffalo Bills. Fifth best-selling jersey, according to NFLShot.com, in the month of June, 2023. There you go, thanks for playing, everybody. Spencer Sears, a nice one for Kenny, Kenny L. And the Red Legs. Yeah, Adam was thinking Bills fans got his jersey already. No, they still want it. Maybe backups. Backup jerseys. You know, maybe maybe Buffalo Bills fans are, uh, are, are tearing their jerseys when they're landing into chairs. Maybe they, you get a rip in their jersey. You're like, I got to get a new one for the season. It's Logan O'Hoppy to 75. Stephen Carney with the Angels. Maybe they're thinking, you know, I got to buy a Josh Allen every year. I don't know if they, they don't change the jersey too often, right? European soccer has got it right. I think they release a new kit basically every year. And a new away jersey. And an, an, a, and an alternate kit. Here's a Masataka Yoshida, rookie refractor for Michael G and the Red Sox. There's Carlos Correa to 350, twins, that'll be for Ed P. Ooh, you're gonna, you wanna get a Sauce Gardner jersey? Yeah, give, give those defensive players some love. Thunk, thinking about Garrett Wilson, he's going to change his number out. Oh. I'm still hoping, Adam, for, uh, for Adam Kupperman. I'm really hoping that Cooper Cup 
goes to the Jets. And Adam would definitely have to get his jersey. Let's see, any other, just a lot of camp news happening here. Former 49er Frank Gore joins the team's front office as a player personnel, football personnel advisor. Travis Kelsey, apparently his mustache has returned. Patriots QB Matt Jones yearning to lead in year three. Oh, nice, yeah, you got a Jamal Adams jersey? Yeah, just take out the stitching in the letter S. I don't know what other what other news we have here. A lot of a lot of roundups, a lot of roundups, camp roundups that are happening. Apparently in Tampa Bay, the QB competition between Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask has, quote, absolutely tightened. I think we're getting a... Uh, some new rules. We'll have to... What are some of the new football rules? I think there's a new kickoff rule, right? The NFL approved, uh, this is according to NFL.com, NFL approved a new kickoff rule this offseason that was met with ire by many coaches. We'll get our first look at how it's handled Thursday when the preseason officially kicks off with the Hall of Fame game. The new rule calls for a touchback for any fair catch called inside the 25-yard line. The resulting possession will begin at the team's own 25-yard line. So I could call a fair catch at the one yard line and it'll go automatically to the 25 yard line. The NFL hopes the adjustment will lead to fewer returns and in hand, fewer injuries on kickoffs. The Cleveland Browns and Jets will be the first club to test the new rule Thursday night. I think we're all curious how it plays out, Browns coach Kevin Stefanski said Tuesday by the team's official transcript. There may be some teams that hold uh, what they're doing until week one and not necessarily in the preseason, but we'll see how it goes. Were there any other significant rules happening? Back in the big Super Bowl, match, you did get a Garrett Wilson signed Nike jersey with a number, name sewn on it, and a price tag says 150 I think. Once stuff sewn on or 300 plus so don't know what the line to that one is hmm. there's Corbin Carroll refractor for Sean Maddock and the uh, Diamondbacks and a Michael Stefanski 49 out of 50 It'd be interesting to see Garrett Wilson, of course, with, I mean, he won the Offensive Rookie of the Year with who at quarterback? So I don't know if it stands to reason that his numbers could be even better with the proper quarterback. Here's Jake McCarthy, 77 out of 99, Sean Maddock. Here's a Ronald Acuna Jr. refractor for Jim, your NL MVP favorite.
got a Joey, Joey Weimer. 109 out of 199 Aqua Wave autograph for Spencer and the Brew Crew. All right, a few more boxes in this case, and another case to go. So, for the Hall of Fame game tomorrow, the Jets and the Browns are squaring off tomorrow. Browns making their sixth appearance in the Hall of Fame game. We'll see franchise legend Joe Thomas in trying two days after the showdown with New York. Meanwhile, the Jets was like to play in Canada for the first time since 1992 in honor of the upcoming enshrinement of cornerback Darrell Revis and defensive lineman Joe Klecko. They had a bit of a longer camp too. Five things to watch for, according to NFL.com, when the Jets meet and Browns meet Thursday night. Zach Wilson has the first chance to show what he's learned. A new quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, hasn't taken a preseason snap since 2018. He won't beat, break that streak against Cleveland, which means Wilson is starting. He should receive plenty of run to showcase how far he's already come in his new role as Rodgers' mentee. The 2021 number two overall pick has disappointed thus far in his short NFL career, throwing for 4,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, 18 interceptions, with an 8 and 14 record in 22 starts. Someone was saying in the chat, this is not Adam either, someone else was saying in the chat, I don't know if this person was a Jets fan or not, but was pretty bullish about pretty bullish about uh, Zach Wilson and was like hold on your Zach Wilson's because after two years or one or two years of marinating behind Aaron Rodgers that's going to be great for him and he's going to be a late bloomer he's going to he's going to really show out once he gets the reins gets the QB roll back again Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's not worth selling now, right? But the response in the chat was definitely, hey, if you're buying, I've got, I've got a lot of Zach Wilson to unload them. <coughs> but you're right, Adam, I mean, not worth selling now. At worst, it's gonna be the same price as it is now in a, in a few years. But at best, it could go up. So either same price or it goes up. Might as well hold on to it. There's James Allen, rookie refractor for the Dodgers, Lorenzo. And there's a James Allen autograph. Nice. A little Dodger Joe Mojo for Lorenzo. And last spot Mojo as well. All sorts of Mojos. All sorts of Mojo magic happening here. Nice. Got a Bryce Turang to 299, purple speckle. That's for the Brewers, that's gonna be for Spencer. All right, yeah, Adam's sitting on a lot of Elijah Moore. And if he plays well in Cleveland, that would be helpful. Sitting on some Denzel Mims. Come on, Denzel Mims, do something. Got a Reese Hoskins. To 199 for the Phillies. That's gonna be, sorry, that's gonna be for the fight in Phils. That'll be for Nick. Cut it 
right on the edge here. All right, two boxes to go in case one. Um, going back to the game tomorrow, Brown's backup QBs in battle for positioning. Much like Rodgers, yeah, Deshaun Watson's not going to take snaps. Browns are instead taking a deep dive into the competition behind him. That would be uh, Kellen Mond, and your former 2021 third round pick of the Vikings. We'll get that start. And then, this is, this is a part of the game that's going to interest me. He also, conf uh, Coach Stefanski said, uh, rookie fifth rounder Dorian Thomas Rob Thompson Robinson. We'll start the second half. He was, uh, he was at UCLA. Now, he looked good there, but I think the, the question is, you know, obviously the NFL is a different speed. Makai Becton will play uh, about 20 to 25 snaps, according to Coach Sala. Missed a lot of games due to injury. Wanting to regain a starting role. The Jim Schwartz era beginning for uh, Cleveland's defense. And then, of course, the new kickoff rule, something to look out for. Oh, Jets are one half point favorites. Who's, uh, who, who's considered the home team? Oh, I guess they're not going to go to overtime. to the home team. All right, next box, onwards. And we got a Yusniel Diaz. Autograph for Steve Locke and the O's. Nice break for the Orioles. Grizzlebees, what's going on? There's Jared Walsh to 399 for the Halos. That's going to be for Stephen Carney. Has anyone been to the uh, NFL Hall of Fame? I have not. I went to Cooperstown last summer for the first time. But I have not been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, it's, uh, it's about, how far away is it? You know, it's in Canton. How far is it from Cleveland? According to Google Maps, Cleveland to Canton is about an hour. That's not bad. The National is in Cleveland next year. Would this be a good excuse for me to go to go to uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame? I've already been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I went to that last year as well. 
maybe knock out another Hall of Fame. Adam's been there twice, but it's been a while. How, how big is it? There's Albert Pujols. That's just a base card. And we've got a Josh Bell photo negative um, for Cleveland. Speaking of Cleveland, it's going to go to Steven. Um, when I went to the Baseball Hall of Fame, people who had been there had warned me, hey, Listen, it's, uh, it's a super small town, and the museum itself is super small. Like, even if you take your time, you'll, uh, you'll probably, it'll probably take you two or three hours to walk through the whole thing. Not huge, but there are a lot of, a lot of things to walk around and see, though. Yeah, the area, Cooperstown area, definitely you can spend an afternoon there, but yeah, the, the Baseball Hall of Fame itself is actually quite small. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is pretty big. You can probably spend like, I don't know, you can probably spend a whole day there. You can probably spend five hours there and still want to go back and take a closer look at some of the other exhibits. Um, after the National last week, I stopped uh, to spend an extra night there to visit the Art Institute of Chicago. You might have seen some of that in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, it, that place is massive. I spent, I think I spent five or six hours there, and I feel, and I still feel like I kind of rushed through everything. I guess if I if I lived in the area, I'd be like I'd be like all right. One day I'm going to spend a few hours in one location, come back some other time, spend three or four hours one of the I mean, just to get the just to absorb the full impact of the amazing stuff there. It's like the Met, the Met in New York is is gigantic. I hear the Basketball Hall of Fame, I, I've never been there, but I hear the Basketball Hall of Fame in Massachusetts somewhere? Uh, is apparently, is apparently not super impressive? Springfield, Massachusetts. I want to say that someone said that the Basketball Hall of Fame is like in a, in a strip mall. Or something like that. <laughs> is that true? Like it's in, it's not like its own building? Maybe it is, I don't know. But someone, someone seemed to suggest that it was not Super impressive. <laughs> it's oh, it's in a weird spot along a river over there. All right. I've heard suggestions that it's not a, it's not as glamorous as Cooperstown or the Pro Football Hall of Fame. This is pretty glamorous. Ultraviolet All Stars Julio Rodriguez. Nice. That's for Zachary and the Mariners. It's generally uh, or one per case. This is a nice case. A couple different relics, some nice autographs, the radiating rookie. Nice. Oh, there may be a strip ball near it. All right. Yeah, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is pretty impressive. That's an impressive structure. Cooperstown is, is, is quaint, but has 
so much history behind it in a historical town. Uh, photo negative, Chris Bryant, Nathaniel in the Rockies. And we got a Spencer Steer, another autograph, but this time Aqua Wave. 55 out of 199. Kenny with the red legs. Very nice. We've got some more color here. 71 out of 125. John Gray. For Texas, Adam and the Rangers. And case one is done. Case two starting soon. Slide some of the stuff over here. And we'll do an autograph recap at the end. Guess we'll set these hits back here for now so I don't forget. And another hobby case. There's got to be a, well, I know there is. There, where's the Hockey Hall of Fame? Where's that located? Is there a Major League Soccer Hall of Fame? Where is that? Does it even have Hall of Famers? Hey, boss. I know there's a golf hall of fame. I don't know where the golf hall of fame is. Either in Texas or Florida. I want to say that the golf hall of fame complex is apparently amazing. The Golf Hall of Fame is in Augustine, Florida. Oh, it's just south of Jacksonville. Okay. But apparently, it's a it's a pretty amazing property, and there's clearly there's obviously a golf course right right around there too. That'd be kind of cool. So, and there's a lot. It seems like a lot of resorts around that area. Some blue green vacation villas. Looks like a couple of resorts around that area. Some, a lot of restaurants, a little retail. A Murray's Brothers Caddyshack. I've been to a Caddyshack. Murray Brothers Caddyshack in Chicago. There's one in Rosemont near the National. I'm going to maybe golf there and, and spend, a, spend a bit of time at the Hall of Fame. That'd be kind of cool. I say there's like there's like um, like fun activities inside. I want to say like uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. That like they'll have like a set of Arnold Palmer's old clubs or something like that laying around that you can like just grab out of the bag and swing in a simulator. Maybe. Maybe I'm making this up in my head. They might have hickory clubs there. You can knock and then hit a golf ball in a simulator. And then, if they don't, they should. Ooh, 
Ooh. That, that's a place I want to go to as well. The Louisville Slugger Museum. I think uh, one of my friends went to, went to that museum and got, got like a mini bat for me there. Here's Michael Grove, 107 out of 150. It's for Lorenzo and my Dodgers. Struggled when he was called up for a number of starts, then figured it out and was good for a number of starts, and then got blown up his last start. And I think he's going to lose that starting job, and I think Lance Lynn's going to slide into that spot in the rotation. But I think Michael, Michael Grove's still on the team, though. I think they're going to maybe long reliever, spot starter, or something like that. Josh Smith, 250. <laughs> to 250 for Texas. Ah, Jan's not far from the uh, Louisville Slugger Museum. Yeah, I'd love to swing some bats around from, from legends of the game. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, you have a picture with a Mickey Mantle bat. See, that sounds cool. There's Carlos Perez to 199. Your brother had his bachelor party there. Nice. It's Gunnar Henderson. Probably had to tell TSA where he got it since they were prohibited to taking on the plane. Um, it was a mini bat, so I think, I think it was a she. I think she just checked it in her luggage. That was checked onto the plane. Strowman's on the aisle. That's a pitch this Monday. Yeah, hip inflammation. That's what I heard. Maybe that's why maybe teams were not as aggressive in pursuing Strowman. Maybe that knowledge, that knowledge was out there in inside circles. There he is right here. Yeah, that's a good that's a, that's a good bachelor party trip. Louisville Slugger Museum, Churchill down some bourbon distilleries. You've seen what items are prohibited, and the minibus is one of them at the airport. Yeah, that makes sense. They would they specifically say minibus? <laughs> yeah. Louisville has bourbon bars in downtown? That's a shocker, Jan. Captain Obvious strikes again. You think some Cubs fans thought that they could get Jason Dominguez for Cody Bellinger, a rental? Two month rental? That's ridiculous. So those those Cubs fans wanted to punt the season basically?
Yeah, I mean, if the Yankees were going to move Jason Dominguez, it, I feel like it would have to be a completely different deal. That would have to be for, like, Jack Flaherty and Nolan Arenado. And then you start putting guys like Jason Dominguez in that trade. Not for a two-month rental. Although, the Rangers would give up a lot. They gave up Luis Angel Acuna for, for a rental, Max Scherzer, but that was a high-risk move for sure. All right. Next box. And Mark Viento, speaking of New York, 108 out of 499. That's going to be for the Metropolitan Tower with the Mets. Oh, he had to waive his player option for that move. Gotcha. All right, so that's not as bad then. He's with the Rangers next year, too. There's Vaughn Grissom for the Braves. Photo negative, parallel. Rex is anything. Judge was still gone. They may have considered something like that, but no way would Judge still there, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always wanted to hit up Louisville someday. It seems like a fun town. There's a bourbon trail, seven distilleries on this trail of bourbon. Um, do they have like, do they have like a, a series of shuttle buses that will take me from distillery to distillery? The 004 out of 350 Andrew Benintendi White Sox edition, that's gonna be Jeremy. I feel like that'd be kind of be kind of important. Maybe a, an extensive rideshare network. The Nolan Gorman refractor for Nicholas and the Cardinals. No shuttle, huh? You think people just do some tastings and they drive to the next one, or is it walkable? Come on, Grizzly. Then they're not going to put the Nationals on a fairground. Let's not go through that exercise again. Definitely not walkable where you went. So, how, Adam? How did? You, how did you get from distillery to distillery if you were to do a distillery tour? If there's no like shuttle and if it's not walkable? I mean, are people just, people just taking an Uber? I'll bet a lot of people are just driving. Oh, you got a oh, bachelor party, get the limo for the day. That's a good call. If there is, uh, oh, there may be tours that pay for transfer. That, that might be the best option. They do have shelves, but most opt to drive themselves. That's a ringing endorsement. I'm sure the Louisville Ch Chamber of Commerce loves, loves that reputation. Oh, is it outside of Louisville? Maybe, I, maybe I'll rent a bicycle. Grizzly said, if there's one good distillery, do you really need another? You know, I, I'm not a bourbon connoisseur. I'm not a bourbon connoisseur, so I, I might not be able to tell the difference. And after a few tastings, you know, we probably all taste the same after that. Uh, I've had Woodford Reserve. I'm not, I've had wild turkey. I don't think I've ever had four roses. I do enjoy the, the, the scotch and the, uh, and the, um, and the Irish whiskey. 
So maybe a, a Scotland, Ireland tour. Maybe someone will drive me around. Maybe uh, maybe some golf, some Lynx golf. Folks, I just got my, uh, renewed my passport. I wasn't expecting it until September. Another, I thought I wasn't expecting it for another month. And I got it, last week. Sitting in, sitting in my mailbox while I was at the National. Where are we going? Lynx Golf? Scotch Tour in Scotland? I feel like it's already early August, probably a little late to plan an international trip before the weather starts to turn. Although it probably would be a lot cheaper to go golfing at like St. Andrews in, uh, in like November. I'm sure flights would be cheaper too. Canada, do I, do I need a passport for Canada? I think I could have gone to Canada whenever. I haven't taken a, uh, an international flight since I went to uh, Spain, I want to say. To run with the bulls. I, I couldn't tell you the difference between whiskey with an E, K-Y, and e, K-E-Y. What is the difference? That I don't know. That's not as obvious. Will Benson, 171 out of 499. Cleveland, this is for you. Stephen Carney with that one. Uh, Will Benson's I don't know if it's a phone number inscription. It appears to be some sort of uh, scribbled in Bible verse, perhaps. It'd have to be like Indiana Jones to figure out this clue. I think it's uh, verse 27 or chapter 27, verse 11. I'm, I can't tell what, that, what the book is. Nolan Jones to three ninety nine. What era of the Bulls did I run with? Twenty uh, tens Bulls. Ah, whiskey without an E is Scottish, and whiskey distilled in Ireland in the U.S. is whiskey with a with an E. Hmm. I feel like that's just a a European well I guess Ireland too that's kind of, that's kind of odd I feel like that's just like we spell color without a U and they spell color with a U Kalur But is that, yeah, is that as distinctive as sparkling wine versus champagne, which is technically have to be in, in the in the region? Seventy two out of seventy five, Brian Reynolds. For the pirates, that's gonna go to Mark. But color and color is still pronounced just like whiskey and whiskey, right? Or color. Some people say cool. <laughs> no one says color. Have I ever been in a Champagne Supernova? I have when I saw Oasis at the Hollywood Bowl. America, yeah, obviously. They decided to drop the U. Who opened for, for Oasis? Jet, I think, opened for Oasis. Maybe Kasabian. 
as well. It's a pretty good show. Yeah, I think it was one of the first tours that Oasis had in the U.S. in a little bit. Something like that. I think the album that had come out, that came out, was actually really good. So it was sort of hailed as a as a comeback album, a return to form sort of album. So it's. Uh, I think that's why that tour went especially well and well received at the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah, my friends and I had a pretty good time there. But you're saying Belgium destroyed a lot of Miller Lite beer because of because uh, they were saying they're the champagne of beer. Huh. Do they still do that? You don't always like it when fans sing along. Yeah, you know, that's that's a very American thing. In Europe, or especially in the, in, in the United Kingdom, uh, much, like, uh, much like soccer chants, singing and group singing is, uh, is quite popular. That's what they do there. You want the big pub chant sing-along thing. That doesn't does not happen as much in the uh, in the United States, but it's a thing in the UK. Am I a Liam or Noel fan? I think I'm more of a Noel Gallagher fan. I guess technically it'd be Miller High Life, Jen, not Miller Light. Miller High Life is the champagne of beers. We strive for accuracy here as much as possible. Got this guy is our autograph, E Guy Rosario. It'll be for Michael S. and the Padres. Got Michael Conforto for the Giants to 299. That will be for Dano and the Giants. Ten, he's going to go to the White Sox. Jeremy Olson and Ronald Acuna Jr. will go to Jim and the Braves. Yeah, I saw I saw Noel Gallagher do uh, Wonderwall at Coachella. It's pretty great. In fact, the, the year that I was there was this, an especially cold cella. I think we called it cold cella. And uh, he was doing a mid to late afternoon set with the high flying birds. And um, it was quite good. A little, little drizzle out there. So it felt, felt like a very English concert.
Oh, there we go. Jan doing a little bit of research for us. That makes sense. That looks like a J-E-R. So what's the verse? What's the, what's, what is it? Jeremiah 21, 11. The path of the righteous man is beset upon all sides. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. No, I think that's something else. That's a different book. I think that's in Ezekiel. So it's, and touching the house of the king of Judah, say, hear ye the word of the Lord. And so it is. As long ago, to 350, Diamondbacks edition, Sean Maddox. We got this guy again. Two in a row for Michael and the Padres. We got a blue Nolan Arenado, 109 out of 150. Nicholas with the Cardinals. There's a Technicolor number, 22 out of 50, Juan Soto. Nice, Michael and the Padres. Another box. Have I ever heard of or liked the band Placebo? I do. Their first couple of records are pretty good. They only have a couple of records. Their first couple of records are pretty good. That's a band I have not seen. All right, uh, got any score updates here? I don't think there's any, any, any new finals scores, but we've got some games in progress, Phillies, Still leading the Marlins, five to two. We're now in the bottom of the seventh. 
Yankees, that game's on MLB Network. That's on in the background. The Yankees are up 5-2 on the Rays. I think thanks to a Giancarlo Stanton three-run shot. Blue Jays are leading the uh, the Orioles 4-1 in Toronto at the end of the sixth. Top of the fifth. Cardinals shutting out the Twins 7-0. Um, who's making the start here? I mean, we'd have to wait a couple... Uh, we had a couple innings before we can declare anything special happening, but but yeah, let's see. Let's let's keep an eye on Dakota Hudson. Um, White Sox are in Texas. Rangers are up big, seven nothing in the bottom of the second. Up big, early. Uh, Reds are leading the Cubs early on in the game, top of the fourth, three two. And the Royals early on leading the Mets 3-0. And then Diamondbacks are in San Francisco and the Oakland A's are here in Los Angeles. Big, uh, everyone see the big sell the team thing that they, that the Oakland A's fans are able to organize throughout various cities, encouraging the A's owner to sell the team, which is not going to happen. A little too late for those kind of protests, I'm afraid. Jan says the only placebo song you know. They, did they do a cover of "Running Up the Hill"? Interesting. I didn't realize that. I think they have a. I think they have a live show uh, release too, right? Right. Some in Paris, maybe France. I thought there was a live album that they put out. Yeah, Stranger Things has a, they, they use the, K, ooh, Kate Bush edition. Look at this. Corbin Carroll autograph, 249 out of 250. Purple Chrome, rookie auto, your presumptive NL rookie of the year, Sean Maddock with the Diamondbacks. We saw the radiating rookie in the first case, and now we got a Corbin Carroll autograph in the second case, very nice. Got a Starling Marte, photo negative for the Mets. And Ken Waldeshuk, 43 out of 50. trucks here. James Alman refractor for Lorenzo and the Dodgers. Next box.
All right, so looking at the standings, let's go through the standings a little bit. Orioles and Rays are on top of the AL East. Orioles are up on the Rays by one and a half games. Who wins that division? Who wins the AL East? Is it the Orioles or is it the Rays? Hmm. Grizzlebees, you think the O's hang on? I, I want to say that the Rays will catch them in the end. They do, their pitching staff's a little banged up, but they are, and they are losing. They're down three runs here in this Yankees-Rays game, but... I think it'll be a, a it's got to be a good finish to the end. In the uh, AL Central, the Twins are ahead of the Guardians by two and a half games. Who wins that division? I, although the the Guardians have sold off um, a number of players in the trade window, are they giving? Are they giving up? They're on a three-game losing streak too. I, I, I would imagine. Imagine that the Twins will uh, will end up winning that division. I think the Guardians are better without Josh Bell. Some, someone else was saying that, the Guardians fan yesterday was saying that, Ryan Boone maybe. They were happy to see Josh Bell go. Two half games still pretty close. It's not a very good division though. Twins are only two games over uh, over 500. When, were the la when was the last time the Orioles were in the playoffs? That's a good question. Maybe early Machado area? What about the, yeah, what about the AL West? The Rangers are a percentage point ahead on the Rangers. The Rangers are a percentage point ahead on the Astros. They're pretty much locked in at first place. Mariners are five and a half games back. They would have to mount a furious charge if they were to get there. Here's the Angels, 31 out of 250. Angels are six games back, but we'll go through wild card in a bit. They're, they're more in the wild card market. Stephen Carney with the Angels. Rangers, Astros, who wins? I think, they, I think the Rangers. I think they, they've got a, their run differential is, is incredible. They've got a plus 147 run differential. That's best in the AL. Second best is is the uh, raise at plus 142, and then it drops off. Third is plus 62. So that'll be a fun race to, to look out for. Um, Braves have the AL East. They're 11 and a half games ahead of the Phillies. Uh, Reds, Brewers, eh, should we throw in Rex's Cubs? Reds are in first. They're a game ahead of the Brewers. And they're four games ahead of the Cubs. Who wins that division? Here's Brett Beatty, six out of 99. Jan thinks the Reds will hang on. I was a little disappointed in the Reds. I thought they'd be, I thought they'd be more aggressive buyers in the uh, in the trade window. Yeah, there's no finest, but they really do. Right? I don't think so. Because the finest cases have uh, YouTube stickers. Uh, no. no. Cool. Negative. It's all yours. Then we got Pete Alonso, 56 out of 199, Aqua Lava. Grizzly seeing is the Brewers will win it. If the Cubs win today, they'll they move up a lot closer.
They're, they're relying on the mind, clearly. That's obvious to me now. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Because they didn't make any moves. So they're going to rely on, on calling some young guy. I don't know. I, I think it I think it would have been a, a great statement of intent, you know, if they if they got like a Jack Flaherty or a, you know, someone, someone like that. Even a Michael Lorenzen, you know, get a get a veteran bat in there. Someone with maybe playoff experience, you know, maybe could be an instant leader in the clubhouse, along with Votto, you know, some extra another extra voice, you know. A little disappointing. Um, the NL West, my, my division, where my Dodgers live. Who does everyone have there? Dodgers are uh, two and a half games ahead of the Giants. The once hot Diamondbacks have cooled off. They're four and a half games back of the Dodgers. It'd be nice to see a, a close finish between the Dodgers and the Giants. I feel like there hasn't been something like that in a while. That's good for the rivalry. I think their last, th two of the last three series of the of the season, I think, are against each other. So that could that could determine the NL West, how the West was won. A great Led Zeppelin live out. are up 6 or 2 now on the Rays. Let's have more big Tolkien fans. Janice saying. What gave that away, Jan? Songs like The Misty Mountain Hop. Lyrics about the darkest depths of Mordor where they found... Surely that couldn't have given it away. Jordan Walker refractor and uh, this guy again although we haven't seen this guy in this case no we have seen this guy well uh, Michael Stapleton you are starting your Egai Rosario personal collection whether you intended to or not I don't know if that was your intention going into this break but you've got three autos of, of him in this case you know Oh, he's a he's a second baseman, and Hassan Kim is there. They might have to might have to move him somewhere else, but that would be a. Uh, let's hope he becomes a perennial All Star in a different spot. You got Nick Castellanos, thirty two out of three fifty.
That's for Nick and the Phillies. Where, where's the case with a bunch of Josh Young autos? Adam is wondering. There's Joey Votto for the Red Legs. That's for Kenny. I suppose you'd have to work through. Uh, I suppose you have to work through some Egai Rosarios before you get to uh, some Josh Youngs. I'm afraid. We got Bo Bichette, 72 out of 99. Green wave for the Blue Jays, John Samuelson. And this is the guy Adam's looking for. It felt weird. It felt like I think maybe a couple cards were stuck together or something like that. All right. Anyway. It's Josh Young. A Spencer Steer Prism for the Reds. Ooh. And what's our ultraviolet? You're turning violet, violet. It is, Spencer Steele will go to Kenny, and it is gonna be for the Marlins. Dano with the Jazz Chisholm. Ultra Violet All-Stars. I really like this insert. Nice. All right, another box down, four more boxes to go, and then we are done. Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost there. Oh, yes, I got a little chilly in here. Sometimes AC is a little too powerful. Ah, it's... It's over. Dakota Hudson was doing something especial, but he gave up a hit to the Twins. Um, I forget. There is a guy that has had um, that has thrown two no hitters in consecutive starts. Have there been no hitters in consecutive days? Has that ever happened? That has to have happened at some point, right? Maybe not. I don't know. He only one one pitcher has thrown one no hitter and then another another no hitter after that. I forget his name, but that that has happened once. But consecutive no hitters. By two different players? answers for me. I feel like Jan would be all over this. Maybe the Google machine is running slow. Got more Tom's Chrome Baseball in the store, ladies and gentlemen. Once I'm done with this, I am going to take a little break. And then when we come back, I don't think anything else is full at the moment. I see a lot of orders coming in here. Um, that jumbo case is down to four. We can definitely do that. 
Looks like full sponsor moving in Hit Parade Baseball. We're down to our last filler there. That would be awesome to do. You can pre-order uh, Jaspi's Big Hit Express. Multi-sport, Series 6, it's back. Some really nice hits in there, folks, because I was helping Nick out a lot at the National. And got to, got to see some sneak peeks on a... Uh, on some nice hits for the shop and for these Hit Parade products. There's Jared Young, Rookie Auto for the Cubs. It's for Adam Copperman. Another dual case break is down at 12. We've got some football on the site if you're feeling the NFL. There's Michael Stefanik to 125 for the Halos. That'll be for Stephen Carney. We've got Select Draft loaded up on the site. We got some flawless collegiate basketball up. We got impeccable basketball. We got Select. We got uh, another two box break of that Futera Soccer. Random letter break down to five. No, that was that was not a uh, in one day. That'd be that'd be crazy, even for the old days. It was just consecutive starts. Here's Josh Bell to 350 for the Guardian. Stephen Carney, Josh, Josh Bell. Yeah, that was the that yeah that was Johnny Vanderbeer. That was the dude. That name was also rang a bell. That's the dude that had two no hit that had consecutive no hitters. But my question was, has there been consecutive no hitters in a week? Like yesterday, Framer Valdez had a no hitter, and uh, tonight Dakota Hudson took a no hitter through the sixth. I wonder if that's happened. There's Otani, Prism, Angels. I mean, maybe even different teams. What about different teams? Just a, two no hitters. One on a one on a Tuesday, one on a Wednesday. Consecutive days. Any team. Uh, let's talk wild card. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think the I think the Rays. Wait, what is Rex got for me here? On May fifth, nineteen seventeen, Ernie Kube of the St. Louis Browns, no with the Chicago White Sox, and then teammate Bob Broom repeated the feat in a second game of a doubleheader the following day. All right, so they're just consecutive days. Is that the only instance? 1917. In the American League wild card race, the Rays are comfortably leading by six games. They're, they're the first wild card spot. Second wild card spot, Astros, two and a half games ahead of the Blue Jays. With the Red Sox on the outside looking in, two games back. Mariners, three games back. Yankees, three and a half games back. Angels, three and a half games back. 
think the Guardians' best shot is try to win the division. They're six and a half games back of a wild card spot. So who gets? Uh, I guess what's the what? What, what is my question? I'm assuming the Rays are going to have the top wild card spot unless they win the division. It'll be Rays or Orioles. But who gets those other two wild card spots? Astros, Blue Jays, Red Sox, Mariners, Yankees, Angels. Who gets those other wild card spots? Astros, Blue Jays, Red Sox, Mariners, Yankees, Angels. Pick two. Ooh, what'd they get over there? Fanatics Live. Grizzlies thinking Astros, Jays, and Red Sox sneak in. Well, no, Astros. Well, now the first wild card spot is going to be Rays or Orioles. You gotta pick two, you gotta pick the other two. And here's uh, for Cleveland, Will Brennan. Rookie auto, Stephen Carney. Cleveland, this is for you. So, Grizz will be thinking status quo. Little Astros, Jays. We'll, we'll get in. Red Sox on the outside looking in. Mariners aren't going to quite catch up. Yankees, Angels are three and a half games back. What about the NL? NL is a little, it's a lot less clear here. Giants only one and a half games. They're in the first wild card spot. One and a half games ahead. Phillies. One game ahead, then Brewers have the third spot. Marlins and Diamondbacks are only a half game back of a wild card spot. Cubs are three games back, and the resurgent Padres are four games back. Of those seven teams, Giants, Phillies, Brewers, Marlins, Diamondbacks, Cubs, Padres, who gets wild card spots? You can pick three from that list, because I think that's a lot, that's wide open. Here's Hunter Brown to 250 for the Astros. That'll be for John Samuelson. Then flip a coin, maybe Giants. Phillies, Padres. Yeah, Padres have been pretty resurgent in the last month or so since, since the All-Star break. And they, they were buyers, too. They added at the deadline. Here's Sandy Alcantara to 199, so I think they're... I think they're banking on their, their, their team to turn it around. There's Masataka Yoshida. Yeah, I'm trying to think too. Who's going to do this here? Yeah, I think the Padres do get in. I, 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 th I think they're going to overtake the Giants. You know, I think they're going to be playing some, uh, some, they've been playing some confident baseball. The team is adding players. Their talent has not reflected their record. You know, so I think they end up getting a wild card spot. I think Phillies get a wild card spot. They added at the deadline too. That Lorenzen was, was pretty good. And Trey Turner just has been slumpy the last couple weeks. He heats up a little bit. That, that's exactly what the Phillies need. So I think they're in. I say Padres, Phillies. And I would think maybe the Marlins slip in there, the third wild card spot. I think Brewers, Diamondbacks, and Cubs will fall a little short. Rex has got some trivia for me. 
being the last pitcher to pitch two no-hitters in the same year. And what year was it? It was recently. I think it's a, it, it was within the last 10 years. Dallas Keuchel, maybe? Yeah, I think he's officially a free agent now. Dallas Keuchel. Um, what are you looking for? Uh, I can't tell you on camera. Oh, okay. It was uh, Secrets. It's uh, Max Scherzer. 2015, really? He had two no-hitters in the season? He's pretty good. Yeah, I guess I don't know where You're next door right now? Michael just uh, let him do the final. Yeah, what was what, what, what? Just pop the Super Fractor cherry. Get a Corbin Carroll Super Fractor Auto. Corbin Carroll Super Fractor Auto? Yep, I screen recorded it too. From Finest. Wow. Wow. Things are happening on Fanatics Live. Did, did you send a did you send a picture of Marin? Oh I screen record I just showed it in the chat though. Oh okay. But I screen recorded it. Yeah. Oh man, we've gotta we gotta got, we got tag fanatics, we gotta tag everybody. Gotta tag Corbin Carroll. Maybe we'll get a super fracture here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go super fracture. Two boxes to go, super fracture? I believe. I believe that we can super. I'll even take a non-auto super fracture. 28 out of 499, Carlos Perez. That will be for the Southsiders, Jeremy with the White Sox. Sports Illustrated saying the Yankees grabbed who? Dallas Keuchel? I don't know. Who's CJ? Who's, I mean, maybe for a minor league deal, right? CJ Abrams, Kevin, and the Nationals. Photo negative parallel. Help the road tell me. All right. <laughs> there's got to be other guy. I would call up a young guy, maybe. What pitcher has the most wins in a season? Cy Young has the most wins in a season with 32 wins. Here's Drew Rasmussen to 75. And there's Nolan Gorman. Ah, oh, Grizzlies, that's mean-spirited. Here's a Josh Young, flipped around. Is that a short print? It is, 173, Josh Young. Adam Copperman was waiting for some Josh Youngs. You got a short print. Right there, a short printed, yeah, a short printed image variation. His teammates are happy, he's happy. That's a great picture there.
Wow, it was John Montgomery Ward with 49 wins in 1879. I don't count that. I don't count records before uh, before 1900. MLB does. Good, good for them. Not Joe. Last box. Last chance in this particular break for the uh, for the super. Yeah, how many innings do you think uh, John Montgomery Ward? See ya. Bye bye. Wonder how many uh, innings John Montgomery Ward had pitched that that season. Do they have milkman in lady in eighteen hundreds? I would imagine so. How else would you get milk to? Uh, to places. Yeah, John Montgomery Ward was probably pitching against milkmen. You know? That was post Civil War, probably pitching against some scalawags or some carpetbaggers. What if he was a milkman? He might have had a second job. Yeah. I have seen Conan O'Brien's old-timey baseball clip. Classic. There are actually... Uh, well, I think that's who, what he joined, right? There are actually people who do that. Uh, do they still do that? I don't know. I guess people still do Civil War reenactments, right? So why, why not play in old-time uniforms and play old-time baseball. Are you serious? In 1879, this Ward guy with, a, with 49 alleged wins, who knows how record-keeping was back then, but he apparently pitched 587 innings. How many complete games did he have? 49? Might have had more complete games. I'm sure some of some of those complete games could have been losses. And our last auto is Jordan Diaz. We got Mike Yastrzemski. Purple Speckle to 299 for the Giants, Dan O. Oh, 58 complete games. Jeez. Although they don't, yeah, I was going to say they don't throw the ball as fast as they, they do nowadays. I don't think the modern baseball was even invented until the early 1900s, right? So what were they using? A, a, an inflated pig's bladder wrapped with a rock and who knows, who knows what they're using. Brian Reynolds going to the Pirates, that'll be from Mark. There were definitely no breaking balls. They may, as well, they may as well be playing a slow pitch softball back then. All right, any supers to close things out here? Let's go supers. No, it's not looking like it, ladies and gentlemen.
But this is that. There you go. That's your break. So let's recap the first case first. It was pretty nice. We got the Julio Rodriguez, Ultraviolet, some James Altman, some Spencer Steer action, short print, Relic, Gunnar Henderson. Snap a picture of that, that's pretty cool. Another Relic. And we had a nice uh, radiating rookie, Corbin Carroll. That was our first case. The case you just saw, the Josh Young short print. We got a Joey Votto relic, a lot of that guy. Corbin Carroll purple autograph, purple chrome auto. Michael Grove and a Jazz Chisholm ultraviolet all-stars. Nice stuff, ladies and gentlemen. That was 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball. Dual hobby case break, 24 boxes. That was pick your team number eight. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.